Hi everybody, I'm so excited to be here to talk to you guys today about the future of hair health. My name is Megan Schlepp. I work for the K18 Hair Innovation Team doing product development and formulation and my favorite science education. So I really want to thank Jen and everybody for putting this on today. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to talk to you guys, so let's jump in. To give you a little bit of a preview of what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start with some basics of hair care history and kind of the strategies that have been employed so far. Then we're going to go a little bit and dive into hair science and hair structure and biochemistry, how damage happens, and again revisit some of those different industry approaches in a little bit more depth. Then we're going to talk about what molecular repair actually is, what makes it different, and two really important themes when talking about the K18 peptide, which are biomimetics and biotech. And then we'll have time for questions at the end. So the hair care industry has evolved over the last couple of decades pretty significantly. Um, to begin with, the strategy was to employ some type of surface modification, and these approaches aimed to alter how hair looks and how hair feels to improve someone's experience in caring for their hair, but it doesn't address the underlying causes of some of the things that somebody might be seeking to alter. Then we reach bond builders, which help to preserve hair. And these are some new agents that will artificially reconnect specific bonds and reinforce the proteins of hair. But we've gone one step further recently in the discovery of the K18 peptide, which leverages what we call molecular repair. And it uses holistic multi-bond repair to restructure and reinforce internal protein structure to regenerate hair strength and elasticity. So one of my favorite things um, when it comes to hair is just how interesting and intricate its structure actually is. Many people think of hair in this kind of separated way where, well, hair is dead, it's not doing much interesting, it's just a single solid string. But hair is a really incredible bio material and it does have intricate structure and it does have um, a dynamic chemical interplay in the way it's able to interact with itself and its environment. So here you can see an electron microscope image of a hair fiber. And there are two key parts of the hair that I wanna walk you through now. The first is this outside area, which is made of overlapping flat scales. This is what we call the cuticle on the outside. That's the arrow on the right. And then the arrow on the left is pointing to the fibrous cortex, which is the inner bulk of hair. It makes up most of hair's weight. Let's start off with the cuticle. This is, like I said, the exterior of the hair and it's hair's first line of defense, acting like a barrier to protect the inside of hair, which is the cortex. The cuticle scales exhibit very interesting behavior, which is that they will swell or open when wet. And you can envision this by thinking about pine cones. My pine cone on the left here is a closed, this is wet hair when it's dry and in a relatively undamaged state will look like. This cuticle scales lay flat, and once the hair has been exposed to moisture, whether that is humidity or um, submersion in water, the, the cuticle starts to swell and those scales kind of stick out and you see more spaces in between. An interesting fact about the cuticle is that the degree of space between the cuticle scales, how far they stretch out, is a function of pH. The higher the pH that the cuticles are exposed to, the more they will stick out, whereas at more acidic, lower pH, you can actually minimize that cuticle swelling. And this is one reason why pH of your product is important when we talk about hair. But the most important function of the cuticle is that it's protecting the inner cortex, which is structured a lot like a rope. It's formed of long intertwining fibrous proteins like keratin. And if you think about a rope, it's made uh, not of one solid bulk or even a few strands woven together. It's made of many, many, many smaller fibers that come together and twist together and intertwine and they all combine to create lots of strength. And this is one reason why hair is a really strong material for what it is actually. Um, and the cortex, these 
strong proteins on the inside of hair are what gives it its mechanical properties. And by mechanical properties, what I mean is strength and elasticity. So strength being how much force does it take before a hair fiber breaks. Elasticity is how much it can stretch and then go back to its form without altering or warping or breaking. Now, when we talk about hair, its structure is very key to the properties that it has. So hair is made up primarily of proteins. Keratin is one of the most infamous. It makes up most of hair proteins and people are really familiar with this term now. But hair does have other proteins, including keratin associated proteins and a few other things going on, like including um, lipids also are important to hair. But the primary architecture of your hair structure is made with protein and bonds work together to stabilize those proteins. So the bonds are holding together that structure and when we talk about hair it's really important to understand that structure so that we know um, how we can alter it and how we can help it to improve the general health of hair. So amino acids are the molecules that serve as the building blocks of proteins which are even bigger molecules. Now these individual amino acid building blocks are linked by peptide bonds, as you can see here, two individual amino acids joined together. And this is the beginning of a peptide or a protein. You can think of proteins like um, beads on a string, in meaning that when you link together individual proteins, you can create a larger and larger chain. Now the individual chains, as you can see here, are further stabilized by what we call cross-link bonds. So in this image all the way on the right, there are two distinct chains of proteins, and you can see that there are different kinds of bonds that help those different chains interact. And these really stabilize the structure of proteins. So when you think back to that image that I showed you of the hair, right, you have this cuticle on the outside, you have that fibrous cortex on the inside, and all of these are made up of protein. So making sure that those proteins remain in a healthy and intact state is really key when you think about other properties of hair. And hair kind of goes through a lot. So we are constantly putting that protein structure up against different kinds of aggressors, and then it becomes compromised and it can break. Once again, this are, these are more electron images of a hair fiber. This one shows a cut across, and you can actually see those different bulky fibrous rope-like proteins on the cortex, and this different overlapping scales of the cuticle. And again, you can see that the cortex really does look like a rope. So when we're thinking about hair and we're thinking about hair breakage, imagine a rope. And if you would want to climb a rope that's intact versus something that's looking a little shabby. Now we understand a little bit about the structure of hair, but something else that's important to understand when you're approaching different ways to maintain the health of hair is what makes different hair types different and what makes them the same. So obviously there are hair types with many different shapes from straight to wavy to curly and coily. Modern methods characterize hair shape into one of eight different curl types. And it's obvious that these different shaped hair, there's some different properties going on. But what it is, is that curl is actually determined by follicle shape, which is the part of your hair that's still living and is present inside the scalp. And it's the protein distribution of keratin within the hair fiber. But the structure of hair and the genes coding its proteins is equivalent. So it's believed that hair keratin accounts for um, 11 out of 25 type 1 keratins, 6 of the 26 type 2 keratins, and many more keratin-associated proteins. And while clearly there's a huge diversity in hair texture, these proteins are highly conserved in all the hair types. It's just that distribution that changes the physical shape. Now, shape impacts surface properties of hair. So this is why traditional cosmetic products, you need to find one that's really suited to your hair type and understanding the type you have will help you pick products. But for something that's targeting that structure of hair, it can work for all hair types across the board, which makes it really important. And again, why 
understanding hair structure is crucial to creating a product. Now let's talk a little bit about damage. I think that damage um, has gotten different perspectives over the years and some people believe that hair can only really be damaged if you're going into a salon and doing chemical services like bleach or permanent color, perms or relaxers, shape change services like this. And while it's true that these are some of the most damaging procedures that you can put your hair through for many reasons, including the very high pH that many of these chemical services are performed at, the different kinds of damaging oxidizing chemicals that are present in them, all of this can contribute to quite severe protein damage, but it's definitely by no means the only way to damage your hair. It can also take damage during routine practices, including shampoos and detangling, right? Every time you wash your hair, you're actually exposing it to different things that can compromise it. So when hair swells, it absorbs water molecules from its environment, and those water molecules will interact with the protein and disrupt interactions that the protein would normally have with itself. So wet hair is actually significantly weaker than dry hair. It'll break much more easily and it's in a more delicate, fragile state. Then you have things like brushing and mechanical styling, which can further induce breakage. And heat treatments, like a blow dryer or a, or a flat iron or a curling iron, heat can also degrade that protein structure as well. Now, finally, you have environmental exposure, which is, I think, the sneakiest form that most people aren't aware of. And this can come in the form of different metal salts and minerals that are dissolved in your tap water that you're using to wash your hair. This can include UV from sunlight and even different pollutants that you would find out in the environment. So the idea of virgin hair being undamaged is really a myth. Now, what happens to that protein structure when these different damaging things are occurring? Damaged hair, it loses the integrity of that protein structure. And something I'll say uh, again and again during this talk is that structure equals strength. As bonds are broken due to these different chemical or environmental aggressors, the cuticle being that first line of defense starts to degrade. There can be holes torn, the different scales can be lifted and chipped off. And eventually what happens is it exposes that inner cortex. Now, damage to the cuticle will alter how hair is looking and how hair is feeling, but it's really that damage to the internal proteins of the cortex that will compromise hair to the extent that you would see extreme breakage. Now, I mentioned that there are different types of bonds that are holding the structure together, and different ones are broken in different ways. Some of them are reversibly broken and they can reform again, but some of them are more permanent and so that permanent form can lead to the most compromising type of damage. Breaks in the main protein chain backbone, remember those peptide bonds, are the major cause of damage that results in loss of mechanical strength and elasticity, aka breakage. So the first strategy that the industry employed was what, what are people experiencing that's the problem? Well, my hair looks dull. My hair tingles really easily. It doesn't maintain its style. Maybe it gets frizzy when I go outside and it's humid. So traditional cosmetic chemists um, aimed to create different ways to improve hair manageability. And these are achieved by modifying the surface. And I say that meaning primarily the cuticle of the hair fibers. This can be done by depositing a conditioning agent like a polymer or a silicone or an emollient oil on the surface. And these things can cover up those breaks or, um, or those gaps in the cuticle, which make hair look dull because it's reflecting light irregularly. And by deposition of something that creates a uniform layer or has a high refractive index and is shiny, hair is gonna look much shinier. It's also going to help detangle hair because it creates some kind of lubrication. So your hair is going to be easier to comb, easier to style, and it's going to feel much softer and smoother. So these address the primary concerns of hair, the symptoms of that beginning level of hair damage and even more advanced ones. But what they don't do is address the underlying cause of those symptoms of hair, which is the structure of those proteins. Bond builders marked the next evolution in hair care, and that's because 
these bond builders started to think about what the structure of hair was at the molecular level, and they target specific elements of this structure. Let's flash back to the different cross-link bonds that can hold hair proteins together, including the ionic or salt bonds, the sulfur or disulfide bonds, and the hydrogen bonds. By targeting one specific bond in the structure, you can help reinforce that protein through that one specific route. But the problem is these different bonds can be affected by different things. For example, the hydrogen bonds are most inter uh, interrupted by humidity and presence of water. Salt bonds are most affected by fluctuations in pH and the disulfide bonds being one of the more long lasting covalent types of bonds can be disrupted by oxidizing reactions, which can happen either in the environment or in the salon. But if you target just one of these bonds and you enter a situation where that bond is compromised in your hair, you'll lose the benefit of the bond builder. So this helped to really protect and preserve hair structure, but we could do a little bit better. And that brings me to a molecular repair. Now, a reminder that structure equals strength. So what molecular repair understands is that the molecules in hair, those proteins, are held together in a network of many, many different types of bonds. And this protein or the peptide that does this molecular repair is able to form a network of different bonds to stitch broken proteins back together, reconnecting breaks in structure which allows you to restore those lost mechanical properties, strength and elasticity. And we've talked a lot of, about hair protein structure, and I'm gonna explain about the discovery process of this peptide, which is what allowed scientists to really optimize it from our biology. So a reminder and a refresher of the different structure of hair proteins. Amino acids are the basic building blocks, Short chains of amino acids create peptides, and longer chains that have a specific secondary structure are what we call proteins. Now, there are many products that employ peptides and actually an increasing number that use peptides or different kinds of proteins in hair care, but pr the protein's structure, right, that order, that number, um, and that composition of the amino acids that make it up will dramatically change the peptide or the protein's properties. And so not all peptides and not all proteins are created equal. The scientists who developed and discovered the K18 peptide employed something that's key to the K18 story, which is biomimetics. Now, biomimetics, if you break the word down, you're mimicking biology. This is a practice that draws from the inspirations of nature and it draws from nature's existing solutions, adapting them to help and solve human challenges. By doing this, it celebrates the brilliance of evolution, translating into innovations that will echo the intricate designs of pre-existing systems in nature. When we talk about hair, that's studying the proteins that make up hair. So the researchers were um, understood that this protein architecture was really key to what made hair such a strong biomaterial. And they looked at every single protein that's coded for in human genes, in the human hair proteome, that ends up in our hair. And they broke these up into small proteins, into different little peptides, and scanned every single sequence for its ability to bind human hair proteins. To, to integrate with them and remain on them. And the peptides that performed the best in this were further screened for their ability to recover hair's mechanical properties, right? Its strength and elasticity. And the protein sequence that performed the best in all of these tests was the K18 peptide. So it is optimized from our biology to be the best sequence to go in and repair hair breaks in its protein structure to restore that strength and elasticity in a lasting kind of way. And this is quite different from applying different kinds of proteins, and it's even quite different from applying extracted human hair keratin to your hair. There, there's many products that will also employ something like this, maybe a plant-based protein or an extract of hydrolyzed keratin.
But with these other proteins, you don't necessarily know the specific sequence that you're getting. And like I said, the number, the composition, the type, and the order of the amino acids will very significantly change the behavior of a protein or a peptide. So there is nothing else like the K18 peptide, and it's been taken, it's identical to the proteins that are already present in our hair. That's how it was discovered. Another key piece when talking about the K18 peptide is its method of discovery, which employs biotechnology. Biotech is a word that I've seen um, increasingly used in, in hair care and even skin care um, products on the market now. And if you break the word down, it's technology that uses biology. This is something that humans have been doing for a long time using microbes as systems to create something that helps humans in some way. The cornerstone of biotech is understanding and harnessing these natural processes, making it a fundamental pillar in modern science areas even outside of cosmetics. Biotech transforms nature's blueprints into practical applications. So people have been using microbes to brew things like beer or wine or kombucha for centuries. Um, but the methods used to do things like this today using microbes to express genes or transform materials or create proteins are becoming increasingly sophisticated. And the developers of the K18 peptide used microbes as factories to research the different peptides and proteins that make up hair. So to recap what molecular repair is and what makes the K18 peptide so good at binding to hair keratin, is that it is biomimetic. It's made of the same building blocks as human hair proteins, and it's identical to those in our hair, though it's recreated synthetically to be just the right size or length, right, that number of amino acids, to be just the precise composition, the type and the order of amino acids, to travel past the cuticle and make its way into the cortex of hair. Reminder that this is where hair's mechanical properties are coming from. So by reconnecting breaks in that internal protein structure, it's able to restore the structure and elasticity, that strength of hair to reduce breakage, which really helps people to grow out their hair and helps from not just those salon services, but all the ways that you can damage your hair. And it interacts via different types of bonding to understand and be a molecular match to hair's own proteins. There are different, type, different types of interactions between hair keratin and the K18 peptide that really enable it to stitch broken proteins back together. And I have a graphic that helps kind of illustrate that, tying it back to our rope analogy. So bond builders are zeroing in on one specific type of crosslink or bond to build up in the hair. But the K18 peptide forms multiple points of interaction, which makes it different than even coupling different bond builders because it's one molecule that has many different interaction points. This pink graphic here shows different protein chains along the cortex of the hair, right? They're all running parallel. They're creating that fibrous bulk that's kind of like a rope. And the horizontal lines represent those crosslink bonds damage breaks not just the horizontal cross links but also the protein chains themselves which really compromises that strength if you as you can imagine it would be much easier to snap a rope you wouldn't want to climb it you wouldn't want to put weight on it um, if it's been frayed and damaged as it is on this left side here um, and bond builders can help to create point interactions to tie these back together but the k18 peptide having all those different points of interaction along that one continuous molecule really serves to stitch those fibers back together. So you, you would be much more comfortable climbing a rope. You could understand that it'd be way more strong and resistant to external aggressors if you actually took the thread, the fiber that the, the rope is made of, the biomimetic peptide that your hair is made of, to stitch those, those um, fibers back together and really reinforce that structure from the inside out. So to recap, the biomimetic K18 peptide exhibits molecular repair to reconnect and repair hair proteins from the inside out, 
it's different than cosmetic chemistry and even bond builder approaches because it's not covering up um, damage to improve hair properties or protect hair, but it's really able to um, restore hair that's been severely compromised, which is protein structure has been quite damaged. And it's a very unique sequence that is capable of such a high level of repair. It's been optimized from our biology. It interacts through numerous kinds of bonds with hair proteins to reconnect those structural breaks and it reinforces strength in all dimensions for the healthiest hair from the inside out. Thank you so much for coming to my talk and for listening. And now at this point, I will take any questions. So thanks all for, for having me.